Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi Sidni Ilma. What you seek is seeking you. By Rumi. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Dr. Sadia Rafiq. And under the super VNO, my professor Dr. Sarah Afzal. Today my topic of presentation is Pakistan's situation in maternal and newborn care. Learning outlines include the Pakistan Demographic and Health Survey, PDHS, trends and figures related to the situation of Pakistan in antenatal care, internatal care, postnatal care, fertility, family planning, childhood, maternal and childhood mortality. National year 2016 to 25 for coordinated priority actions to address challenges of reproductive, maternal, newborn, child, adolescent health and nutrition. Learning outcome. By the end of this presentation, past participants will be able to describe the situation of Pakistan in maternal and newborn health according to PDHS 2017-18. 10 priority actions to combat challenges of reproductive maternal newborns, child, adolescent health, and nutrition goes according to National Year 2016 to 2025. Uh, just a general introduction of Pakistan Statistics 2023, the total population of Pakistan is 241.49 million. Pakistan is the fifth most populous country in the world, 33rd largest country in the world by area, growth rate is 2.55%. Rural population is 61.18%, whereas urban population is 38.82%. Crude birth rate is 27 per 1,000 year, per year, and crude death rate is 6.1 per 1,000 per year. Rate of natural increase is 2. So the different, uh, all the indicators are given. The important one is the rate you can say in your country. Still birth attendance is 68%. Maternal mortality rate is 150 per 1 lakh life births. Contraception prevalence rate is 34%. Uh, stunting under 5 of years of age 40%. Wasting is 17.7%. Normal development index is 0.544 and AXA rank 161 out of 192 states. HIV prevalence is 0.2%. Incidence of tuberculosis is 264 cases per 1 lakh people. Health expenditure as a share of GDP is 3% and health expenditure per capita is 38 US dollars and government spending on health is 0.6% of GDP. Now moving towards the Pakistan situation according to PDHS survey trends and figures. <clears throat> First of all, antenatal care. If you see the trends in antenatal care coverage, the percent of women aged 15 to 49 who had a lay of life birth in the five years before the survey for the most recent birth. You can see the PTHS from 1991 and 2017-18, which is the latest one. You can see the increase of antenatal care by skill provider from 15, 16, 2061, 73, and 86. Antenatal blue line is showing antenatal care in first trimester. It also increased. And then the four uh, antenatal visits during the whole pregnancy increases from 14 to 50, uh, 51. And the components of the antenatal care which were being observed were the blood pressure measure, urine sample taken and blood sample taken. According to background characteristics, the women who had antenatal care from the skilled providers were usually young, 85 to 88% were 15 to 35 years, and 78% were 35 to 49 years. And in the urban population, 94%, rural population, 82%, highest wealth quantity, 98%, lowest wealth quantity, 67%. Then the highest education category, 99%, and with no education was 67%. And highest in Islamabad ICT, 94%, lower in Blochistan, which, is, which was 56%. 92% of women from Punjab were satisfied with the services provided during antenatal care, as compared with only 56% of women from Balochistan. So almost, almost half of the women are not had any antenatal care in Balochistan. Hematemics and parasitic drugs, 59% took iron tablets or syrup and only 2% took intestinal deworming drugs during their pregnancy. Counseling regarding antenatal care, early initiation of breastfeeding in 52% and exclusive breastfeeding 54% and balanced diet during pregnancy, 7 out of 10 had uh, counseling regarding that. Health facility births by region, if you see, this is the percentage, the light yellow is showing 35 to 44% had in health facility uh, in different regions, then this is the whole data occurring in the, uh, de having delivered in different uh, health facilities of the region. So if we see the trends in place of delivery, 
initially 1991 85% was in home deliveries and they have declined by the time 34% and there is increase in health facility degree from 13 to 66% and if you see the health facility births by education the higher the education the more the deliveries are the healthcare center whereas it has no education as 52% Assistance during delivery, percent distribution of births in the five years, you can see the 60% of deliveries are being done by the doctors. <clears throat> this 10% by LHVs, community health workers, midwives, this 24% chunk is done by guys and TVAs and natural birth one, narratives and others at home. Uh, again, you can see by increasing the education, the skill assistance and delivery was uh, influenced by the higher education of the mothers. Deliveries by C-section, the proportion of deliveries increased from 14% to 22% in 2017 to 18. So there's a gross increase in cesarean sections. After C-section, 74% stayed at the health facility for more than three days as compared to only 3% of women who had a vaginal birth. And uh, women after normal delivery, 69% were discharged less than six hours after delivery. If we're talking about uh, protection against neonatal tetanus, which is a leading cause of death among new nets in developing countries. From 2012, 13 to 17, 18, the proportion of mothers whose birth was protected against neonatal tetanus has increased by 5%, from 64% to 69%, basically. Talking about the postnatal care, the proportion of women with a postnatal checkup within two days after delivery has remained largely unchanged between 61% to 62% in all these years. However, 36% of women did not receive any postnatal check during the first two days after deliveries. And this is a quite huge figure. So they are not being catered after delivery in the initial 48 hours. In many complications usually arise at this time period. This is the figure postnatal care by place of delivery you can see. <clears throat> this is the percentage of live birth in two years. Health facility for women, 79, 81. Women 1920, and it is almost the same because if the mother is delivering at the healthcare facilities, obviously baby will be there. And then the postnatal care for newborn is concerned. 64% had postnatal care, where 35% did not receive any care. Within the first half hour of the life, only 41% of newborn had this care. 34% of women residing in Balochistan received for postnatal care during the first two days after birth, compared with 77% of newborns in ICT. Islamabad. Again, the women receive less antenatal care and the child who born in Glochistan, they are also being neglected. So it's a huge number. Newborn care practices during the first two days after, but usually which are being conducted, were the umbilical cord examination at 64% and temperature measured, breastfeeding counseling, counseling on newborn danger signs, observed while breastfeeding, weight, newborns were put immediately after birth on the bare skin of the mother's care were only 11%. And here we are talking about the kangaroo care, in which the, bear, the child should be after, just immediately after should be put on the bare skin of the mother of the chest. It is, it's a very good remedy, but it is only practiced in 11%. Talking about the child health. Low birth weight is less than 2.5 kg or 22%. It is a finding that policy makers and program managers must take seriously. The majority, 81% of the uh, children otherwise born live were of no average or normal weight. Some of the causes of low birth weight babies are mother who are younger, less than 20, 34%, then the mothers, 21%, which were from 20 to 34 years, and the birth orders of six or more, birth order two to five, mothers who are smokers, Mothers who did not smoke even, they have 22%, then lowest red quartile, highest contact, and the Punjab has highest percentage of low birth weight babies, 24%, and same 23%. Punjab, uh, the reason of this could be because in Punjab, the data is somehow better than other provinces. So we have this figure. Talking about the immunization, <clears throat> in all these years, the basic vaccination has been increased percentage from 35 to 66%. And the children who were not vaccinated at this year 28, they have declined grossly to 4%. And the basic uh, vaccination coverage of the person of children aged 20, 12 to uh, 23 months vaccinated, you can see BCG to all uh, DPT, polio, measles, all basics were a good range. And 4% had no vaccination at all till now. 
talking about the vaccination coverage by regions <clears throat> you can see 29 to 42% in Balochistan the red area which is Punjab you can see it is 68 to 80% is the coverage and in this area Jammu Kashmir is today we have no data at all Newborn deaths are still a major contributor to under five mortality with around half of under five deaths occurring in the first month of life. You can see the different causes like the prematurity, asphyxia, sepsis, and 10% congenital anomalies. These are the different causes. Then the feeding practices and supplementation. You can see only 48% of the children are exclusively breastfed for the first six months. Then 13% with breastfed complementary food, 33% with other liquids as well, and 7% were not breastfed at all. Talking about the nutritional status, percentage of children under 5 who are stunted, you can see the Punjab, less than 31%, light green area, fabric of Punta and this, 31 to 45%, with this huge dark green area of the Balochistan, Sin, and Gilgit Pakistan, more than 45%, which are very alarming figures. The trends women's nutritional status percent of ever married women age is you can see the trend thin and obese have a lot of difference in it. <clears throat> Talking about the malnutrition under five, you can see in Pakistan 40.2 percent are stunted children, 17.7 percent are wasted, 28.9 percent are underweight, and 9.5 percent are overweight. Fertility. Fertility and its determinants. You can see the trends in total fertility rates. Births per women for the three year period before the survey. You can say it was in 1990 to 4.9, and now, which is now, it's 3.6%. And total fertility by household. You can say the higher the household, the lowest is the fertility. In the lowest, 4.9, and then highest, this is 2.8. <clears throat> Talking about the total fertility rate by region, you can say births per woman for the three year period. Maximum is in Gilgit, Pakistan, in the little area of Fata, which is more than four. And the, usually the green area is 3.5 to 4%, and Punjab has less than 3.5. It is the births per woman. So, total fertility rate by education in educated is 2.6%, with they have no educated, no educated, illiterate, they have 4.2%. <clears throat> Age at first marriage and birth. You can see the uh, uh, among age to 25 to 49 and men 30 to 49. You can see the difference between them. Family planning. Percent of married women age 15 to 49 using family planning. Any method 34%, any modern method 25% and withdrawal 88%. So, and modern method used by region, which is 25%, you can see the maximum prevalence, this light green is more than in Gilgit, but this star region. And in Punjab, and it is 20 to 29% in Sen. And in Balochistan, it is less than 20%. Modern women use of household wealth, the highest, the wealthiest, they have more contraception usage. And friends in the family, you can see any method, the modern method, and any traditional method which are being practiced. Knowledge of prevention of mother to child transmission 16% of ever married women and one quarter of men know that HIV can be transmitted during pregnancy, delivery, and by breastfeeding. Less than 10% of women and 23% of men know that HIV transmission can be reduced by the mother taking special medication. Mortality. Childhood mortality. Trends in childhood mortality. Deaths per 1,000 live births for the five-year period before the survey. You can see. <clears throat> Started from under five mortality, one to 74. Infant mortality from 86 during all these years to 62. And 49 to 42. Neonatal mortality. And mortality by previous birth in was Death by 1,000 live births for the 10-year period before the survey. You can see. Less than two years, 122, and four plus are 44. At these mortality level, one in every 14 Pakistani children does not survive to their fifth birthday, which is very sad. Spacing birth at least 36 months apart reduces the risk of infant death. The median birth interval in Pakistan is 28.2 months. 
overall 37% fewer born less than two years after their siblings. Under five mortality by regions, you can see this red, 73-25, all Punjab, Balochistan, Sindh, and Gibraltar. And under uh, five mortality by mother's education, as education increases, the this rate has also decreased. So, decrease in infant mortality by increasing the women's education. <clears throat> Perinatal mortality by mother's age at birth. You can see in the young mothers, it is more, 84%, as the 30 to 39 minimum number. And again, 40 to 49, the more the mother's duration of five years between the seven. Maternal mortality Punjab has 227, Balochistan has 785 deaths per 1,000 life births. One of the main reasons of this high MMR is very low utilization of family planning services. Now moving towards the national year 2016 to 2025 for coordinated priority actions to address challenges of reproductive, maternal, newborn, child, adolescent health and nutrition. Ministry of National Health Services Regulations and Coordination, Government of Pakistan. Accelerating progress of MDGs 4 and 5 for building new momentum beyond 2015, Government of Pakistan remains committed to support the efforts being undertaken to accelerate improvement in newborn child and maternal survival, especially focusing on reducing morbidity and mortality linked to common preventable causes. This goal can be achieved through following 10 priority actions. Number one is improving the access and quality of RM and CH primary care community based services, ensuring quantum of care, including newborn care in rural districts and urban slums. <clears throat> RM and CH, reproductive maternal, neonatal, child, adolescent health. So, primary care services in rural areas of Pakistan are critically dependent upon the Lady Health Workers Program and the relatively decent initiative to produce more community midwives. The most recent formal evaluation of the LHW program and a number of informal reports post the evolution have identified several areas of weakness and opportunities for further enhancement of their knowledge and skills, especially around standards, best practice for maternal, newborn, and child survival. Next is improved quality of care in district facilities, including rural health centers and district hospitals. Facility-based services should be available for mothers, newborn children, and adolescents across the continuum of care at various tiers of service provision. Administrative and legal steps should develop linkages between medical colleges and universities with district health system. Human resources, especially female medical officers, lady health visitors, and rural health facilities need to be staffed with competent cadre capable of delivering quality maternal and newborn care at first contact with formal health services and regular on-job training and expanding services access 24 by 7 and supporting facility infrastructure, developing, uh, developing referral pathways and linkages. Third is overcoming financial barriers to care seeking and uptake of intervention. Targeted condition cash transfer provide direct cash payment to poor household contingent on certain behaviors like routine vaccination, nutrition supplement, care seeking for high impact, high mortality conditions like diarrhea, disease, pneumonia, antenatal visits for pregnant women, family planning, delivery, and postpartum care, health insurance schemes for the identified poorest and marginalized groups, and provision of family planning services in remote areas. Fourth is increased funding and allocation of RMNCH. Pakistan's current health spending is a mere 0.6% of the GDP. Much of the ex existing expenditures within the health sectors is limited to tertiary hospitals and limited investment in strengthening district-level health services, especially the RICs and BHUs. A realistic and robust plan for phase increase in health spending of primary health care for the next five years. Innovative ways of generating finances, imposition of health tax on luxury items, same tax on tobacco or nutrition, UIs, uh, soft drinks, taping private sector resources, etc. Et Reproductive health and family planning is one of the most cost-effective interventions to reduce maternal and newborn deaths. The vicious cycle of continued high rate of population growth and poor RMC outcomes and nutrition in parks and needs urgent attention. Closing the gap between family planning knowledge and practice through comprehensive services in the country, focus on sexual and reproductive health education among adolescents, both boys and girls in school and out of school, and urgent need for declaring population emergency. Sixth is investing in nutrition of adolescent girls, mothers, and children. Lack of progress in increasing exclusive breastfeeding rates, effective promote strategies need to be revisited. Fortification of food with micronutrients. 
biofortification of stable food, nutrition education, food safety and control of my mycotoxin reaction that can improve the nutritional impact of agriculture practices and programs, ensuring that women, adults, and mother and children get sufficient amount of key vitamins and minerals are proven strategies that can be substantially reduced child mortality and nutrition-related problems. Seventh is investing in addressing social determinants of health. Expand the policy and program in health proportion, disease prevention, and health care to include social determinants of health approach. Women and girls empowering through skill development, women focus microfinancing scheme, creation of job opportunities, and investing in the cottage industry. Generation and sharing of evidence on social determination of health and health equity, including health equity focus intervention research. Eighth is measurement and action at district level. One of the key limitations for action is lack of accurate and timely information. There is a need of strengthening the district information systems as well as DHIS, verbal autopsy, and the creation of sentinel information system for important areas related to RMNCH. Ninth is national accountability and oversight, and tenth is generation of political will to support RMNCH as a key priority within the sustainable development goals. Moving towards the recent advances. It is a document of WHO in Pakistan like breastfeeding gives babies the best possible start in life and breast milk works like a baby's first vaccine. <clears throat> Kangaroo mother care helps preterm babies survive, ensuring the survival of preterm babies with the revolutionary kangaroo mother care techniques. Kangaroo mother care opportunities and implication for rural of Pakistan. Neonatal care, 40% of total mortality. Globally, kangaroo care is one of the most cost-effective interventions to reduce neonatal mortality, and it required, does not require any high equipments, intensive care facilities, or technical knowledge. So it should be implemented. Then the implementation, uh, implementation of baby-friendly hospital initiative in pri various private and public hospitals of Lahore. Uh, so it was a cross-sectional study. The data was collected, and it was observed that 60.8% of baby-friendly guidelines are being observed and implemented in various hospitals in the Lahore. Basically, it is for the uh, promotion of breastfeeding uh, for the uh, babies. <clears throat> Then why are the Pakistani maternal fetal newborn outcomes so poor compared to the other low and middle income countries? It was the basically the study, the global network maternal newborn care registry uh, was population-based surveys was done. And in Pakistan, they were the baddest, uh, you know, the all the figures. The MMR in Pakistan was 31, 319 per 1,000 live birth it, as compared to the other countries which were included India, Congo, Kenya, Zimbabwe. Was uh, and in other countries there was only 124, and here it was 319. And the neonatal mortality rate was 49.4 percent live births in Pakistan, whereas in other countries was 20.4 percent. So the Pakistani pregnancy outcomes were more were much worse than the others. So the reason for this poor outcomes include the Pakistan sites reproductive and women are largely poor educated, undernourished, anemic, or deliver a high percentage of preterm and low birth babies in uh, the settings of often inadequate maternal and neonatal care by addressing the issue highlighted in this paper. Now it's time for the multiple choice questions. WHO and UNICEF recommend that children should initiate breastfeeding within the first hour and be exclusively breastfed for the six months. All of the following are recommended to encourage successful breastfeeding except initiation of breastfeeding within one hour of uh, birth, avoiding the use of pacifiers and artificial nippers in terms of breastfeeding, continuous rooming in uh, with breastfeeding on demand, restricting length of breastfeeding time to prevent nipple soreness and engorgement, avoid use of supplement formula during the early stage of milk production. B. B. E. 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 Uh, no, the D, e. D is the correct option, restricting length of breastfeeding time to prevent nipple soreness and engorgement. Question number two, all staff of hospital should receive orientation of breastfeeding policy and its implementation. Hospital policies that interfere with breastfeeding include all the following except moving the infant to the nursery for the night to allow uh, mother to rest and build up her milk supply, feeding schedule every four hours to allow mother's breast to make more milk, use of pacifier to prevent the infant using mother as a pacifier gave her sore lips, showing all mothers how to express or pump breast milk in case they are separated from their infants, and routine water supplementation by dropper to prevent dehydration. E. E. Uh, no. B. B is the B. Showing, uh, no, no, D. Showing all mothers how to express a firm breast milk in case of separation from the infants. It is not included in this policy. 
preterm birth and intrapartum related complications are the most common cause of perinatal mortality here are some available prophylactic antibiotics to the newborn can reduce it which one of the following factor does not decrease the perinatal mortality rate low social chronic status improved antenatal care improved maternal health prenatal care and counseling and maternal education a a yes a a little bit In postpartum, skilled birth attendant is providing instruction to the mother of a thriving infant with persistent jaundice who was breastfed. The nurse provides which most appropriate instruction to the mother: switch to bottle feeding the baby for two weeks, stop breastfeeding permanently, switch to bottle feeding permanently, feed the newborn infant less frequently, and continue to breastfeed every two to four hours. E. 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 E.
the as far as the presentation is concerned the use of graphics tables information content everything was excellent uh, the mcqs all are five options mcqs and you have given such a wonderful mcq that uh, everyone has learned a lot so keep it up very well done and i am so proud of you and uh, you are an inspiration for each and every student who is uh, in our class very well done allah hafiz thank you so much ma'am allah hafiz miss you all thank you allah hafiz thank you allah hafiz thank you so much allah